this car is something that seems to have taken the show by storm. It's an electric seven-seater SUV, big one too, full size, and a double cab pickup made by a company called Rivian. They're electric, otherwise I wouldn't be telling you about them. And this is the skateboard platform. I'm just about to have a tour of the car uh, by a chap called Mark Van Els. Mark. Good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Thank this you. is exciting. I mean, yeah, we're very excited. There's a big buzz around these two cars, which seem to have broken out in the last 24 hours. Yeah, we, you know, everybody's very positive about what we're doing. Yeah. So let's let's rewind then. Uh, this is the the, the the chassis of the car yeah. of both the pickup and the SUV. Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's full EV, not not plug-in hybrid. Um, 0 to 60 in three seconds, which is unbelievably quick. I mean, that's like yeah. that's supercar, hypercar quick. Yeah, very Almost. fast. Um, Pretty exceptional for this type of vehicle. I was going to say, when you, when you look at it, it doesn't look like it, was, it would do something like that. Well, we've been working for a long while now to develop vehicles, really, to take people on adventures, to allow them to go to places that conventional vehicles normally can't go to. So by using, really, the purity of the electric architecture, we never wanted to consider internal combustion or hybrid. So we started yeah. from scratch yeah. with an electric architecture. We've been able to develop this platform we call our skateboard and this is the basis for all of our vehicles for both the S and the T and indeed some future vehicles that will be coming out in subsequent years. So the S is the SUV? Correct. The T is the pickup truck? That's right. Our battery pack uses cylindrical cells, yep. 21700 form factor, but the modules and the pack are designed completely in-house, both wow. the hardware and the software. Our largest pack is 180 kilowatt hours. 180 kilowatt hours? 180 Stone kilowatt hours, crows. which is pretty much twice as big as anything available on the marketplace at the moment. So in the truck, that's over 400 miles of range. Or on the S, the SUV, that's over 410 miles of range. So should be eliminating anybody's concerns around range anxiety. Goodness me. Well, I mean, I know that off-road off vehicles should lend themselves really well to EV propulsion because instant torque for rock exactly. crawling and exactly. quietness so you can you can hear the train off you've got a spotter yep. you can do some proper off-roading of course ground clearance you've got options of yep. having this this skateboard this flat belly pan nice and high so we have a quad motor design yeah each one of these motors these tiny motors each one is nearly 200 horsepower oh they're only there aren't they yeah yeah okay so each motor controls each wheel so we have a transfer Box, a reduction gear, yeah. gearbox in the middle, and then this extremely long drive shaft, which gives us weight, great wheel articulation. Yeah, and is this... as you say, we can deliver instantaneous throttle response and torque control, but also we can vary the torque across the axle. So we've we've got infinite torque vectoring. We can yeah. even reverse the torque across the axle to give us some really unique handling characteristics, wow. particularly off road. And that's the thing, really, when you think about what that can do yeah. in terms of eking out every little piece of grip, whether it be on a steep ascent or a steep descent, yeah. that's really game-changing in the off-road market. Yeah, and you've got, you know, I see airbag, adjustable airbag Yeah, suspension. so we have a huge range of articulation. We can go down to 208 millimeters, very low for getting in and out of the vehicle easily, yeah. but we can go up to 360, Three milli 360 millimeters of ground clearance. Wow, that is a big bag. Which is amazing in terms of then off-road capability. Yes, yeah. And the vehicle's been designed so we have very aggressive ramp and departure angles. Yeah. So we package the body absolutely it's got to, very support, short overhang. to support this off-road capability, yeah. I can see on the SUV it's like an upswept underside, Correct. I guess for what's that for? Ascent, steep ascent. Yes. Yeah, that departure angle is very important when you're coming off yeah. a piece yeah. of steep terrain. But also dispelling another myth. Because we have four motors, we have a huge amount of torque, 14,000 newton meters of torque. 14,000? 14,000 newton meters of torque at the wheel, so we can tow very heavy loads. Now, this is interesting, because we get this question asked more and more on Fully Charged. I like the idea of an EV, but I want to tow a caravan, yep. but none of them seem to allow me to. Yep. So we can You've tow... You've arrived at the answer. We can tow 11,000 pounds, which is pretty much 5,000, five tons. That's five thousand tons. Five thousand kilograms with this vehicle. In fact, we could tow more. That's more than a Range Rover. Yeah, much yep. more than a Range Rover. We could tow more, but that's just about then how much weight we want to add to the vehicle in terms yep. of structure. But the towing capacity because of this torque is immense. But what it also delivers, which is important not just off-road but on-road, is a really low center of gravity. Again, when we're thinking about climbing oh, and descending, and yes. the low center of gravity is immensely important. Yeah. And also the motors are inside the axle, both at the front and the rear. 
Okay. So in terms of on-road agility, you wouldn't expect this car to be maybe agile. And agile wouldn't be an adjective you'd use to describe it. But no. actually the agility of this vehicle, particularly with some of the torque vectoring, yeah. this is a really fun car to drive on the road as well as off the road. I've got to say, I really like the design of it. It's, um, it's very tasteful, very simple. Well, we spent a simple. lot of time working on the basics, which is for us is getting the proportions right. Yeah. We didn't want something that was futuristic and kind of way out there, which would um, not be appropriate yeah. for the, the aspirational aspect of the ownership of this vehicle. So yeah. we spent a lot of time on proportion. That's a big car. How big is this? Well, the, the S is just over five meters long. Five meters. So wow. it's not that big in comparison with, say, something like a Range Rover. Yeah. Certainly a long wheelbase. I mean, people are going to directly compare it to, I guess, the Range Rover or the uh, Audi e-tron or the EQC yes. Mercedes. Yes, possibly. But this is a full three-row seven seats yeah so even adults in the rear we can get 85th percentile adult in the rear so this is a proper seven seater vehicle we also spent a lot of time developing what we think is a pretty unique face for this yeah so developing the lighting system and the real signature of this of our vehicles with what we call the stadium lights so these are oh yeah they are like a stadium yeah we call them stadium lights so I, this is the position light yeah and then this is the daytime running light with the dip beam and the main beam lights, directional lights yeah. inside. The which gives the car a really unique face. So yeah. we're a new brand coming to the marketplace and we wanted something, maybe people wouldn't recognize the name initially, but they certainly recognize that and remember it. And yeah. then they'd remember that's a Rivian. And the other unique feature, which is pretty cool, a nice little Easter egg, yeah. is when you're charging the vehicle, yeah. this changes to green and shows you the state of charge as the charge increases. Does it? So you can sit in a coffee shop, and look at the vehicle and, and see the battery away, charge increasing, which is pretty cool. That's very good. Safety is extremely important for us. This is a five-star car, IHS top safety pick. Yeah. So crash performance and real safety for our customers yeah. is very important. So we use high strength steel extensively at the front of the vehicle and down the sides. And obviously to protect the battery pack, yeah. a huge amount of engineering detail at the sides and at the front and indeed underneath to make sure that the battery pack stays intact even on the most um, the roughest of terrain. Of course, you've got rock terrain, and you're going to have a yeah. you've got to have a good wading depth, presumably. So we have a composite material, yeah, which is almost like a ballistic shield underneath the vehicle to protect from rocks. So that's your first. So uh, we have Kevlar and carbon fibre underneath. The battery pack's completely sealed. Yeah, that's another myth with electric vehicles. If you think about it, submarines are electric. Yeah, it used to be electric. Yeah. So this vehicle will wade through at least a meter of water. A meter? The back of the battery pack is completely sealed. Wow. The drive units are sealed. Yeah. And actually the only limitation, the vehicle could go deeper, but because we have so much space and so much volume, the vehicle will actually float it away. It will take all, yeah. So it's a buoyancy issue. So if you load the vehicle up, it will actually go deeper than that. A meter of wading depth. Come around here, but let's go around here and have a look in the inside. So we've taken a lot of inspiration from our yeah. sports equipment, bringing some of those materials and themes into the interior of the vehicle. But can also I, can lots I touch of, some of that. Yeah, of course. Also lots of natural materials, lovely wood, real wood. Yeah, it's really nice. And beautiful Solid. materials on the floor. There is no carpet. And the material which is used for the foot mats is actually used for our outdoor furniture, which is extremely easy to clean and waterproof and weatherproof. So again, no oh, concerns yeah. about getting this vehicle dirty. It's so it's rub rubber floor. Yeah, it's yeah. important to emphasize that we want people to go out and get these vehicles dirty. They're designed to get dirty and to get used. So it's like it's dirty luxury. Exactly. Basically. It looks spectacular. A little, a little Easter egg here where Rolls-Royce has got an umbrella. We have a little torch. Oh, you've got a good LED. Wow, that's really bright. And this, co this is cool because in here is one of the cells one 21700 cell of the pack. that's used in the battery pack to propel the vehicle. That's great. Charges on the move. It does, it charges when it's in there? Yeah. Oh. That's really, rear, really, Lots of focus on cabin space. Yeah. A huge amount of leg room for the rear occupants. And then again, yeah. at the rear for the third row as well. Of course, no trans tunnel. Yeah, completely flat floor. Yeah, yeah. And then you say, Eight, did you say 83rd percentile adults? 85, yeah. 85. In the rear. You've got a full-size glass roof Correct. with a, another one at the back, yeah. so two yeah. panoramic Electrochromatic roofs. roofs that you can change the tint off to change the amount of sun penetration. Right, OK. Let's talk like uh, production dates and potential pricing. Yeah, so end of 2020. Yeah, that's not we're, that far away. We're, we're taking orders now or make a deposit online. Yeah. By end of 2020, um, in customers' hands.
and for a base vehicle, yeah. um, before discounts, yeah. under seventy thousand dollars. Under seventy thousand. Seventy thousand dollars. So for the truck with the EV discount, around sixty-one and a half thousand dollars. Crikey! And with the S with the discount. $65,000. And you're an American company, aren't you? We're I know an American you're, company. You're not vehicles, American, but... Yes. He's not I'm a, American. I'm a brick in the US yeah. and loving it. We, are, we have a manufacturing facility in Illinois. Okay. Just south of Chicago, two, two hours south of Chicago, where all the vehicles will be manufactured. And all the supply base, the majority of the components on this car are manufactured in the US. Are they? Yes. And you're going to sell them globally, that's the plan? Yeah, left and right hand drive. Um, yep. I'm very keen to get these in the UK, obviously. I, I am. After the, after the US, we'll go to Europe and the UK, Europe, yep. and also China. Yeah. But our plan is for all territories, so Japan, uh, the Middle East. Let, can we go over to the pickup? Because obviously, course. there's nothing more American than a pickup. Yeah, we've been. Um, inundated with people who want a pickup a plug-in but want an electric vehicle and yeah. it's interesting we did a lot of research with ev owners yeah who have like a sedan or an suv yeah but also have large pickup trucks yeah for or an off-road off off vehicle because yeah. they wouldn't take their electric vehicle to those locations yeah and when they see this they love the combination again utilizing the advantage of that skateboard architecture. A huge amount of space in the front. So this is 300 and 330 litres. 330 litres. So maybe you can this help me out. So this is... Can I? Can yeah, I get this out? It's my cool box full of lager. I could get in that. It is like a mini hot tub. Well, it really looks like one. I think we'll do a version because if you think of all the electrical energy on board, we could heat the water and you could... Uh... Oh my goodness. <laughs> Should we close the front and then we can go down the side yeah. of the vehicle? So you've got multiple tether points. Yeah, engines. nice tether points for, again, all the luggage. Yeah. And as you can see, again, same face, a Rivian face. Exactly making use the of those same lights. face, yeah. 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 I'm digging And this. then for the truck, lots of uh, interior, interior space, very different color theme we're showing on this. So darker wood, yeah. richer greens, giving the car a, a very different feel. A more of a forestry look. But here, on the side of the vehicle, something completely unique is our gear tunnel. That is amazing. So storage for, in this case, a snowboard. But if you imagine, strollers, golf bags, dogs, tools, equipment. If it's a heavy That's night, you could probably sleep in there. You actually could. And you then, actually could sleep in there. But you can see. In Japan, goes all in Japan, the way through the vehicle. You could e -M -E -B -M -B that, Airbnb <laughs> that in Japan. And then this door, you can stand on to put oh. stuff on the roof. Oh, okay. Deliberately so it's designed. Load bearing up to what kind yes, of load bearing? Take an adult. Yeah. And then you can sit on here to change your shoes after your long hike. This is deeply practical. Wow. It's meant to be, yeah. It's deeply practical. Let's put this back in here. That's a huge amount of space. Obviously, for a pickup truck, we've got a really generous bed. Tailgate system, which folds to 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So in the 90 degrees position, this is 2.1 meters long. 2.1? 2.1, okay. so you could fit a dirt bike on here, and then all the way down to 180. Oh, I see. So you can walk in closer. And then inside here, very important for us in terms of off-road capability. A full-size spare wheel. A full-size spare. And that is really full size. A full size square. 20 inch. And if you don't want to take that, there's another 250 litres of storage in here. Dry storage that you can use for maybe some of the dirty gear. Why? Well, I'm not much. a pickup guy, I'm a Brit. And I come and see people using pickups. Yeah. And also an immense amount of practicality. But if you've got four people in the car, yeah. and it's where raining. do you put your luggage? Where do you put the yeah. shopping? It rolls around in the back. Yeah. But That's for us now, thing. you've got the front. Frunk, the frunk. Gear tunnel yeah. and a huge amount of space in the bed. I've never been a pickup guy. Maybe that will change. So many people have said that. So many people have well, said that. Well, because of exactly what you've just said. I look at it in England and go, why would you just fill this with rainwater and yeah. leaves? Yeah. It's just useless <laughs> to me. But suddenly it's not useless. Well, there you go, fully charged views. A deeply impressive uh, Rivian R1T and R1S. That is an amazing tour. I have to say, I'm, 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 I'm very impressed. You're very speechless impressed. there. I am actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. I didn't much. expect there'd be such an attention to detail. If you'd asked me to guess how much that SUV would have cost, I would. That's have good to hear. A hundred thousand US dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, a fully loaded car with everything on it will be. I suppose you can order it with lots of yeah, with bells a, and whistles. With full battery pack and all the other interior. And I didn't talk about 
We have full self-driving, so level three driving capability on the vehicle as well. So we have LiDAR at the front, three radar, full forward cameras, wow. two radar at the rear. This is going to be the world's first full EV production pickup truck, isn't it? Yes. It is, isn't it? There isn't one of there, there isn't one available. One. How does this compare the size-wise to the Ford F-150? It's so what, America's best-selling truck? Yeah, slightly smaller. I mean, this is, okay. a, let's we say it's a mid-sized truck. Um, it doesn't look mid-sized to me. Just a little bit smaller. This is 5.4 metres in length. 5.4? So it's not huge. Okay. And 2.1 metres wide. I love it. Thank you.